Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. So it's um, uh, I'll uh, I'll give you more samples that the warrior in terms of whoever wants to give you whoever you and I can leave a few of these um, uh, hundred units. Uh, uh, I can, yeah, I mean I can leave this uh, next to the PCR machine to work. Yeah, we'll be hanging out. So that's uh, that's it. So cool. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. Hey there. Um, I have a question remotely because it's uh, really hard to hear the audio there. Um, I see you've got those samples on the desk. I couldn't hear whether or not you were saying they're room temperature stable. Yeah, they are. Um, no, the samples are. Uh, they've been tested uh, for ten years at room temperature, and yet they are. You can keep them and uh, ship them um, for months and years. Actually, they are room temperature. Also, QP circuit. Very cool. And and what company is that? Because I'm not familiar with that. In the U.S., it's Mango Bio. The manufacturer is Solis Bio. Uh, so MangoBio.com. If you go to that website, uh, we'll leave the information here. We're okay, because it's it's re it's really hard to hear that clearly over the remote Mango, connection. Like the fruit, uh, you know. Okay, got it. The fruit gum. There is apple and there is mango. Everybody. <laughs> yeah, got it. Thank you. Yeah. yeah we'll also be uh, taking notes in yeah. the uh, Google Docs. So if there's anything you can't hear, yeah. take a look at the Google Docs. And so I was you told to, to, uh, to our whatever information that Google. Um, so this is not only qPCR but uh, PCR as well. What was your name? What? Uh, Caleb, K A L E V, Cask, K A S K. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Why don't you put the name on the? That's a real name. That's a real name. Let's go ahead and get on with the rest of the meeting, and then yeah. we can do the rest of the files maybe afterwards. Sounds good. Intros. Yeah. Yeah, sorry, Kayla, oh, it's a B, it's a B. Oh, I didn't type that. I typed it. With okay. a B, yeah, no sorry. B. Okay. Yeah. No, no, uh, oh, yeah, right. hey, uh, no, sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <God. Yeah. laughs> What's no. happening? <laughs> you know, it's K-A-L-E-E. <laughs> All right, Gary, you have some good news about 51C3 uh, sign up. Okay. <laughs> Take notes. Um, just take notes. <laughs> I'm going to be taking notes, um, so Gary else doesn't have to unless you have a major revision. Yeah, so I'm going to start with the volunteer updates. So we've been having some amazing volunteer meetings. Um, a lot of you have attended, and major achievements happen. Like um, Shashank and Alan came together and figured out a way to put us on a, a hosted back end so that all of the data that we will be getting through sort of things will be going through this back end, including an electronic science system, which we've been wanting for ages. So Alan coded that up. Um, and I think Jenny's on the line. Um, so we'll get to that in a second, but we actually have an iPad over there um, to, to use for the electronic sign-in to replace those thousands of sheets that we're using. Um, and so we'll be able to way better catalog not only the people who are coming in and out of the space, but also um, have on that same system the volunteers who are on staff and if someone is signing in as a member or not, and we'll be able to run some analytics on that down the road, which will be great. Um, eventually, and we've been talking about ways to get a, an RFID card reader in, we'll be able to get that data on the same system as well. So um, someday, in the not too distant future, we'll be able to integrate all of these different streams of people coming in and using the space. And this is a huge achievement. Um, and so great <laughs> to Shashank, who's like over there laughing. It's Alan. And Alan, especially Alan, boss. Um, and yeah, so that's, that's one thing. And then the other is um, we figured out a pretty good process for our new volunteer um, application and vetting. So you all remember it's pretty loose before. And we've created a stepwise process, so we have um, an updated 
volunteer application that Jenny and Aniva have put together. Um, so it's ready to go. We can share the link um, with you. And then feel free to send that on to anybody who wants to volunteer here in any capacity. It has enough questions to get nuance of whether they want to volunteer in front desk or perhaps do something else. We'll follow that up with interviews. And after that, we'll do um, the training. So hopefully we'll reduce that, um, that no-show probability where people would come to uh, not exactly a no-show probability, but we did have the case where people would not show up for the training, or they would come to the training, we put a lot of resources into making that happen, and then they would never volunteer. Um, that happened way too many times. So we're not only going to get to know our potential volunteers better before they ever um, work with us, but um, we're going to understand if you know, they're going to stick around before putting a lot of resources into them. And that will be followed by a three-month three month probation-like period where they won't be full-on volunteers yet. They'll have to sit a couple of times with an existing volunteer, and then they'll get kind of checked off. Um, and so a lot of this great feedback comes from um, Arnie, who spent 30 years as a volunteer fire chief and who obviously really knows how to work with volunteer crew um, in serious circumstances. Can you give us the link for the application so we can see? Yeah. Um, so should, is that something we should be forwarding to people? Or? Yeah, if you know of anybody who has an interest, you can send that their way. Right now, we don't have any great copy. We don't have like a flyer so that we says. We should put, put that as a to-do item then, make a, like just a to-do if you're interested in volunteering, just on a general sheet. Totally. Okay, so can we put that just as a to-do item? Yeah. And then if somebody goes back to the meeting notes, we can say what were the to-dos and people can start knocking off. Great idea. Um, could somebody, if you have access to the link, could you put it into the notes? Oh, um, I could do that. I was going to say, I haven't checked up, but because we have Final One's status now, we can recruit for volunteers on this process. Um, volunteer match or volunteer. Do we want to do that was one of my questions because if you are very in need of volunteers definitely but I would think at this point it sounds like you want to be a little more selective of who we have volunteering here just because they would want them to have a genuine interest and not just somebody who's looking to fill volunteer hours say for a school. But it might be the right fit. Yeah. Not well we could definitely tailor our ad to say this is what we're looking for. Right. Right. I think that's the right approach because we can assume that everybody who wants to volunteer in a science-related field knows that BioCurious exists, and they might know of a volunteer match um, and find us through it. Mm -hmm. uh, and thanks to Neva for actually setting um, us up with accounts on all of these sites. Um, so I think hand in hand with that doc about if you're interested in volunteering, here's more information, we can um, double up and use that info for um, any sort of recruiting, whether it's on outside sites or internal. Um, so another great achievement is Jenny and June Axa and Josiah offered to redo a website for us. Um, and if Jenny's there, I might ask her to say a couple words. I think I only see one person in I don't recognize them, but I don't think Jenny. If she's not, I am going to send Tito a link so that he can just show you uh, the beta version. It's in the invite. It has a the link to the web stock. Do you 
Yeah, so that is like the basic framework of the website that they're coding. Obviously, that will have content, including pictures. <laughs> Scroll from one black pane to another, please. Um, yeah, and so they're adding, you know, a big prominent donate button. It's obviously got this nice clean cupcake or layer cake um, layout. And we can fill that in with content and add more in a scalable and still attractive way. Okay. Um, I've been actually collecting content to put on the website once the framework's up, just because I was doing updating the wiki for the bioprinter group with vegan cheese, and so I started things like putting together all the news places we've been mentioned and featured cool. in lately. Um, so we have that all collected in one spot, um, and some other things that we want to have up content-wise. Um, and Jenny is collecting photos. So she had requested that if you have any photos of anything related to using bio curious, send it her way. Um, and so this is a further request for um, content like Maria collecting, or if you've been getting a lot of questions about BioCurious, uh, we have this great FAQ. Um, we can definitely add to that one of the more nuanced questions that we're getting, and then keep pointing people to that. Like, I can't emphasize enough, like point people to the FAQ and not to email info at biocurious.org, because each one of those takes a lot of time. Is there a way to automate messages? I was just thinking we could maybe just have it be an automatic for your email. Yeah, we can definitely do that, but um, if there is it you still have a question, that's yeah, that's a trouble. I think with our website, if we can have a lot of the content there, and Jenny had the idea to do a, a contact form rather than having our emails, especially our personal emails, like prominently displayed there in the contact us. Um, that way it'll be a little more robotic. I don't know if it's a great solution, but I hear you, Anita. Um, the other is maybe having canned responses that you pull. Yeah, I would say that that would be content. something we can build in later, but it's, you know, we still need to write those responses and we can put that as a to-do item. Well. Yeah, so we built the first FAQ by literally like scraping the questions that we've been asked and our responses. So there's a lot of responses that are out there in the ether, and I'm just like assuming that you've got the questions that you've answered. And if that's the case, um, you know, send them over to Jenny to add to that FAQ. Um, that'll just help us build that out with questions that we've already answered. Um, so. <laughs> Those are some of the major achievements of volunteer um, meetings. What's the photo for the website? I found you there. Uh, In the digital age, everyone needs a web presence. <laughs> no. um, it's. Oh, you guys want to post the website? Yes. <laughs> Good question. Yeah. Why don't you tell me, Shashan? <laughs> not to be a scold, I'm not interested. But it doesn't tell any story there, right? It's a Caruso, it's a couple of things placed in a thing. What we need is, is that to understand that we are trying to collect one money and another. But I've answered the question of the potential people who don't know about their curious and actually move them down the path where they would find the information that they have. Right? And I think there needs to be a story book that needs to be done, even before the logistics of it. It's already it's already in progress. Okay. So, so I haven't seen that, that's why I asked. So yeah, we're that's why I was afraid I was. Um, like the purpose of a website is to like digitally funnel people into what behavior you would like them to take on. And so in this case, it's supporting the lab, it's coming, it's learning about science, which is part of our core mission. It's finding about what we do and that it's possible to come into our tour. And we want to drive people to those right places. Um, and that's why it's set up in a very like clean way. Um, our website doesn't look that great right now, it looks okay, not great. So you want to just land there, get a good first impression. You don't want to have anything to complain about. You also want people to self-serve. You want them to be able to, because if they're going there, they're looking the answers, for information. Yeah. To sign up, if we can have an easier membership sign up process where all the information is in one place and it on, the information automatically goes into our back end, that's awesome. If they can donate, if they can donate on a monthly basis, 
that's why I would want to prominently display that donate button there and that at least gives somebody a uh, reason to question, like, why is that donate button there? Like, is there there's something I'm missing? So part of the donate thing I do want to talk about, because once you're 501c3, there are certain formats you have to give and certain information that has to go into your receipt that you give to people for tax purposes. So I have on my laptop that's crashed that I'm starting to recover documents from, all of that info that I'm going to be sending on so that we can have some templates because when we give them things, it is our requirement from the IRS what we have to have on their statements and what information has to be on there. And that changed three years ago. It used to be you could just send a like, generic receipt amount of time. Um, it's really the website can stop the mechanics of it because it's very well done. I don't think it's again the point that I'm making there is is that there, there is no story from what you're just from right now. Yeah, that is obvious. And then right. we, uh, I think there needs to be a thought a little bit, and I'm sure there is something to do here, right? That we have a school children coming in, we are getting professionals who are science based, they are engineers, and how do we show them in a couple of clicks itself that this is a place for them? Plus the donation people, people will come. And I think that the logistics of how you put together the STML follow up to that story story is done. Right? Yeah. And I, I think that was a point of it. Yeah, so that is in place, like for the sake of time and since neither and Jenny nor Jenny are here. Um, they they can tell you more, but that is how it's set up. Like okay. there's there's just very few actions that we want them to take. So we want the website to be clear about that. Um, so yeah, that's exactly right, and we are on it. Um, okay, so about 501c3, uh, I mentioned this is a volunteer meeting, but uh, we have been put into the Cisco Matching Gifts uh, program, and the reason that I mentioned that is not because it's a one-off, but that's an example of one way to funnel um, contributions after 501c3, and it means that for every Cisco, there's another uh, there's another similar program that we could be taking part in. And um, so this is another request to be, be reaching out to your companies, to your friends and families companies, and just don't forget to mention that BioCurious um, could be a part of their And both public and on our website. Yeah, um, hopefully that's a part of the content. Um, but at our next volunteer meeting, um, if you're interested in this kind of stuff, um, come to that and we'll be discussing more about it. Well, it will be the next one, so I do not know right now. But you'll email the volunteer. Yeah, I mean, you're not going to be surprised. <laughs> Uh, when, when it's there. Okay, that's that's what I have to say about that. Great. Do you have any other corporations that you know of? That Just that have? we know of. What? Just that we know of. Yeah. Basically, we're getting censored, but not anymore. Is this? Yeah, I, yeah. Sorry, is this? Okay. Is this computer? Or? No, just for that segment. Oh, okay. Another one down below. Here, you want to talk about how much money you have? Or I can come over with Yeah, so we have around $9,000 cash in the bank. Um, we have just a few. You kind of, and I haven't checked like membership checks or donations um, in cash around here, so there's a few more hundred, um, and then we have about like 300 outstanding just from a little class that was done. Um, but that's nothing compared with. Uh, yeah, so we have like three groups coming in this month, and it's bringing in a little over $10,000. So one of them is on uh, the one that's coming Tuesday. The group that Maria uh, pointed out is from uh, Germany. They're called Trend Micro. They're just here for a short tour. Uh, if you would be interested in uh, running the tour or being part of the tour, uh, please email me. Please 
community. Um, and and we can all have fun and be part of the tour. Or maybe Maria's going to be doing that. Actually, yeah, I need to double check my schedule. No, it's fine. I have just, I have overbooked myself severely this month because of all the cheese, but I'll be here so I can move to Boston. Yeah, so we'll be here. I can probably come in, but I want to just. I don't want to overstress the other, there's a bigger one. The bigger one is the one I've been spending a lot of time working on the details for, so. Sorry, is this kind of micro like the anti-virus? Yes. They're like super active. They came in during one of our biofitter meetings, and I spent about an hour with one of their uh, directors. And he is very supportive of what we do, and he does a regular meeting um, with the guys. From, he's based here in Silicon Valley out of Cupertino, and they frequently have their team in from Germany, and they want to come and see what innovative new things are happening in Silicon Valley. Just kind of like a hey, let's go check out something new, and they have a certain amount of budget, not a lot, but they can make you know a little bit of dona uh, a donation for getting to learn about something. Um, and he thinks that specifically the bioprinter project and some of the other things we do could be worth you know them coming by, and he was very excited by that. And Tito has done all the new negotiations after the initial talk with the Trent Micro guys. Otherwise, I would have taken more of the email. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so, I also mentioned for our uh -huh. videos in my book. Oh. Uh, because we have uh, some kind of small project there. Um, some, it's a kind of class for system engineers. You have to put the one can. As I mentioned, this slide that completes all the parts. So, probably. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, talk with Tito so about details for that. This will be a nice opportunity for my yeah. company to be interested. Totally, I mean, fine. No, KLA Centaur would be a really good partner. Yeah. yeah. And then, <laughs> let's see if we don't even. Yeah, yeah. I know, I know you're, you're trying to get us introduced to CERN. How, how's your, um, uh, part, your paper go? Good. So, they accept the, I mean, they accept the data. So, we are now. Are you going to go out for the experiment? Um, I'm not sure the next time, but from here. Very exciting. Okay. This one, me. I was just trying to pull up a project called Science Active that was related to CERN. It was called uh, Local Large Hologram Collider. It was just like this a mass project that would show like what it would look like if the LHC was over San Francisco or wherever you want. But I think I'm going to do some science stuff. So, yeah, yeah. And then there's the, what is it, super large? For science science? Yeah, but it's like, there is one which is built in Japan. Okay. Not all of mine. Oh, okay. This one was circular, but anyway. Um, yeah, that'd be cool. So, so I can totally talk now. So there's Trend Micro, which is sorry, I just spoke Wednesday on the 15th um, at, I think I said 7 o'clock. 7 p.m.? Um, 7 p.m. Okay. Or 6 p.m. 6 p.m. 6 p.m. Um, yeah, and then, let's see, the week after, on the 21st, there's another tour. And so what tour means is, you know, basically coming to the lab, a uh, little history on what BioCurious is, seeing you know, all the stuff that we're doing here. Um, somebody can give me a sample tour, guys, right? what's going on. Yeah. All the way down, I'm like, cool. So, I'm sorry that the audio is, is just really tough to hear from here. I heard something about a tour on the 15th, but I couldn't hear what it was for. It's just, it's got such a bad echo on it, I'm not able to make out what people are saying. Sorry. Could you introduce yourself? Oh, yeah. Sure. Um, I'm Marsha Mednick. I used to come to the old BioCurious um, meetings about four or five years ago, but back then I was known as Marsha Karen. I don't know if either Ari or Raymond might remember me from some years back. Ari's over there. She remembers you. Oh, good. So um, the reason I stopped coming is because I had a baby and the first three years have just been chaotic. So I'm, I'm going to start trying to come back. Oh, I think I remember you. We talked about uh, a like... California state legislature thing, right? It wouldn't surprise me. Okay. 
Cool. Well, nice to meet you again. Sorry, the audio nice is bad. Nice to see everybody. Uh, I'm trying to think of how to do it better. Well, we need, we need a mic. Yeah. So I just rejoined the meetup group. So if anything's posted on meetup, I'll be able to see it. But I don't see anything for next week about a tour of something. Oh, yeah. So what the project is about? Curious stuff about mics. So I keep reading to so these are just for like private tours that we're doing for uh, different corporations and stuff. If you look in the Google Docs, we have the name and, and all that sort of stuff. Got it. Cool. He wanted to have some really good site to site stuff set up between us. So I don't know what he's got in mind. He thinks he already has some mics and stuff. He would come and set them up. Um, and I just found a list of companies in Silicon Valley that do employee matching. So I'm going to email them. Um, so we can let people know if they belong to one of these companies, they want to make a donation, it doubles the. Uh, Potentially doubles the amount of their donation. Not all of them do double, but some of them only do 50%. Yeah, and we can always offer to give that money. <laughs> you would need something which will be if somebody goes to Intel or something, what would they tell them about? Are you saying how do we initiate this? I mean, somebody goes to Intel and says, okay. I want this to be given to my peers. So they would they have to do, um, having done way too much this at my past three jobs. What will happen specifically like with Cisco is they will say, it's a little bit for the employee to go through. They say, I've made a donation to this company. They will need our EIN. They will need um, some other That's info. Right. Yeah, no, there, there's stuff we have to have set up to give the people on our end. Yeah. And we will need a web page with all of this info so that they can set up the employee matching. The first person who does it, after that, most of the companies just have a drop down list. You get selected from once you've been vetted as somebody who's a 501c3. For Cisco, um, what they needed from us was our our tax ID number. Yeah. Um, and what we found out through signing up for ATCC recently is that once you're five hundred one c three, your EIN is the same as your quote five hundred one c three number. If they ask for that, our EIN <laughs> is on our website at biocurious.org slash donate. Yep. Um, and and I just sent you to the email uh, with the PDF of somebody who has Silicon Valley matching. It's a huge list. Cool. Could you post it into the notes? No. Is it possible? Or maybe, or my battery ran out of my laptop okay. and I can't post it yet. Oh, yeah. wait, what were you trying to post? The, the link to the list of companies that don't have value that have matching this program. So, uh, you know, Tom Bradley asked about the number. Yeah, because he signed up for the ATC. Right. But I, I got it for him. So the Cisco needed that along with um, an overhead um, expenses ratio. Yeah, and a lot of times what we're going to have to watch out for on our end is once we start doing these, is it's a lot more paperwork because then they will start sending us employee matching gifts forms that we'll have to fill out. It's not much. Once you've done one or two, it's just kind of like check, 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 fill this in, sign, and then you send it back to them. And sometimes if you're lucky, they send you the check with the form. <laughs> sometimes you have to send them the form back and then, get, then they send you your check. Um, and it's to make sure that they're donating to legitimate nonprofits and everybody's filed the right paperwork. But at several nonprofits, up to 30% of our donations were coming in from matching gifts. So once you get it rolling, it can be a very good income stream. And I'm just not going to underestimate the fact that you have to keep up with the paperwork though. So you may, as it's coming, you may want to have just a specific folder for these to go into that somebody sits and goes through. Yeah, I mean, that's another category it's, of work that we need to fill. Like with this volunteer program, like there are some specific rules. So we've actually really thinking about um, categorizing them. Um, and so that, uh, like, you know, financial guru, that's a really important one because we are getting more funds in. Um, we're able to get 501c3 status, but we need to know the way to move forward. Like. Um, best accounting practices, something that's sustainable and hopefully automated or hired out, but like to what extent, what can we do? Um, just to mention like some roles in case you're thinking about these or interested or know somebody who might want to volunteer a few hours. Um, like one is just an internal social butterfly, somebody who likes putting on events like these member parties, like somebody who's really like that to be their role. Um, or salons or even like field trips. Like we don't do enough of that, like going out to other cool labs as a group, um, having speakers come in and teaching us something new. Um, so another is like someone who's into 
is dev and ops, like help us build bridges to foundations and other organizations. Um, and a huge amount of uh, interest has been expressed from moms and other people who relate to kids in some way, a teacher or whatnot, who want to bring their kids in or want like kids to be around other kids. And that is a lot of work, but there's a lot of demand. So um, if we could get like a K through 12 um, rock star, like who wants to organize those sorts of things consistently, that would be cool. Um, so another is like, we can be a lot more strategic about soliciting donations. So if we could have something akin to like a director of strategic partnerships, looking for those um, high net worth individuals who might be great partners for a program at BioCurious. Um, this would put us in those. So that was, that was my short list of things that would be really interesting. So you were thinking about the landscape of the yeah, so Trend Micro that's on uh, next Wednesday, and uh, then on Tuesday after that, so the 21st. It's on the BioCurious calendar, as I just have all these it's like private events. But um, at 3 o'clock, there's a tour with this group called the uh, Eisenhower Foundation, Eisenhower Fellowship. And so what they do is they, they sponsor um, foreign researchers. Um, so, for instance, we're going to have uh, some of their fellows are going to come visit the lab for it's work. Did you be on the set or on Tuesday? Uh, 3 o'clock on that one. Uh, so, there's this guy, uh, Dr. Mauro uh, Rebello. He's a ed tech and biotech entrepreneur, the founder of Mobile Brain, a learning platform that teaches 48 courses to 700,000 students through cell phones. Uh, he's based in Rio de Janeiro. Uh, there's also Mark uh, Shag, who's from Taipei, China. Uh, he's the president of Synax Biochemical Company, uh, and he is a biotech badass. And maybe there's some other people that are going to be showing up too. So that's that's that. So those are their tours. And then on November 5th, we have a group uh, from a oh, just go Mark Chin, H S E I H, sorry H E E, H S E I H. Uh, and I'll update the notes. And then on talking. November 5th, we'll do that. Uh, and then on the 5th, there's an event that Maria is heading up, and it's a uh, follow on from uh, when we had a tour with uh, some business students from uh, Skokobo University. Yeah. Through the same connection, uh, we've got a group that's coming from a uh, big Swiss chemical company. And so they're going to be doing a uh, big workshop. So it's going to be two two hour workshops uh, in the lab, and Maria could. Like more about how Austin's going to be. Which company? You want to? So I have no idea which company it is. Oh, it's Asco Nobel. They're a big chemical company. ASKLO Nobel. Asco. Yeah. Um, yeah, they're coming. Um, and I'm going to be working with Tom, um, who we're going to be teaching Josiah's Iliad class, which is um, looking for antibiotic resistance in different plants. Um, and as part of that, I'm rewriting all the coursework for that to be a little bit more streamlined and corporate and professional looking. Um, so hopefully we'll have like a 20 page book workbook we can give them. Um, Cause they're going to be paying us a lot for that. So uh, it'll be two, two hour sessions. Um, and uh, Josiah said he can't help out that day, but he can, you know, get us some materials and help somewhat. Tom said he can help somewhat, um, but, uh, one of the reservations we have about it that we did want to bring up is we do need some maintenance on the hood. Um, we took a look at it again. Okay. Um, so the hood, the HEPA filter needs to be fixed. There's some other problems with it. And we were hoping we could use some of the funds for this class sure. to take yeah. care of that because making up the plates and what have you for this, we're just having a lot of problems and yeah. all the groups are having problems with that. Really? So if we could say, you know, as part of this class, we're going to get that fixed. Um, I think that would be the right way yeah, to do so it. It, or we just need to get a new filter. Okay. I think uh, I'm going to double check. We do need the new HEPA filter, and I'm not sure if we need to have it re-inspected when we have that done. I don't know that we've ever had it inspected or what happens. We need to have it inspected. Yeah, ESL two. Yeah. Okay. So, so if we just need the new filter, I think it's like three or four hundred dollars somewhere. It's in that range. Cool. So, just, can you just send me a link to order it? Okay. Yes. Yeah, perfect. Okay. Great. Hey, I'm back. Uh, since I, I don't know if it's on this. Motion that we need this thing to be done. 
it's going to cost us 500 million in service. This is for the most experiments. Uh, so this is new, like we had brought this up at two volunteer meetings ago, um, and it was determined that it was working fine. Um, if it's not, yeah, let, let me and everybody else. Yeah, we've been we've been checking for else. the BioClear project. A lot of the projects were just having a lot of contamination issues. Yeah, it's something, yeah. If something's not working, yeah. Out, really um, so we got, I haven't even checked back there yet, but um, uh, Todd got things. by is it possible to so we can come away? We left it on site and uh, an attempt yesterday got up and uh, this is the beginning from the end comes in So strange. They may have been taken for scrap because we tried to, we spent the night to try to put them in the cage and there was no room. I sent an email to uh, equipment saying we can't move them into the cage and somebody from equipment take care of it and I don't know what happened after that or not. They may well be. Uh, but they would have the same issue anyway. Yeah. You they are beginning to be a little more flush with cash, and I'm not suggesting you should do any of it. Uh, I think we should schedule a quarter meeting, so we can start with the budget, and then have the people around here work on it, the most important thing, and then so it's a, Right now, I think everybody needs to collaborate. Uh, email RBC, yes, you know, kind of yeah, we built that into the process in the state. Um, so there should be something like that on the calendar. Um, and since Eric's not here, um, I think talk to him. Yeah, maybe we could just get this in writing and then have the steps to get getting that done written down. So but it's pretty clear how to approach it. Like we definitely have money for it, and I also wanted to bring up like it asked about a microscope. Um, that I sort of forgot about that, but Brian, yeah, um, we have been talking about that. Yeah, getting um, we had you know just a better quality microscope. We had the one that was Cameron's, but he took with him to San Diego, and it was really nice to have something where you could actually uh, do things where you could actually have the USB hookup to have it take the digital photos, so that when you're looking at things, when you're doing the cytometer readings, you can actually take a photo of it and look, either look at it offline or save your data offline. And um, as we're starting to do more things, we may want to look at what, again, we should make a list of what are our want-to-haves and go down the list and see what actually makes sense for how many people would be using it, does it make sense um, as investment. Um, and one of the things I'd like to do going forward is figure out, and I talked to Josiah about this, who may or may not stop in tonight. Um, uh, one of the things he's still working on is that HPLC that we've got. Um, and I told him, you know, is the big thing holding him back from that is the cost of the pumps, and he wants to run a class on that. If we're going to have a class, we can justify buying the replacement parts as part of the cost of the class since we're going to recoup the money, yeah. as well as get functional equipment yeah, out of it. Show. And so, um, I, I gave a presentation to the San Jose Unified School District, uh -huh. and the guy there is like, yeah, my dad's an immunobiologist, like I have, I have this HPLC in me for a long time. I don't need it, you want it? I said, oh. yeah. So yeah, um, I was like, do you have a card? He's like, oh, I know. He's like, here's my card. I know he didn't email me, but I can get his email, so I want to follow up on that. But it brings up the bigger point. It's like, yeah. stuff exists all over the place. Um, it's just a mismatch of resources. Yeah. Um, we have had a relationship with the BioLink depot for a while, but we haven't asked them explicitly for like X, you know. Um, so that's a matter of just being yeah. a point person to actually do that. Yeah, they love us. But yeah, well, I was going to say, one of the big things we need to do on that is we actually, in my opinion, and I, I'm somewhat biased, but from the, with the bioprinter and the real vegan cheese, we'd like to see more of this more glassware. What we have a lot of is a lot of, or we need to go through what people are storing glassware. So we have so many people that are making up solutions or other things, especially in the flasks. I, I, I know we're all guilty. I mean, both of the projects I'm on, or as guilty as everybody else, but we're to the point where we almost don't have glassware available when you're going to go to an experiment. Okay. Well, let's and that may be both the procedural as well as a want, but I just thought I'd throw that out there as a, well, it's on my head. Right. Okay. So fair enough. Um, we do have an equipment list. Yes. List, so it's it's very much overlapping with that. So let's not yeah. get too far into the details. No, no. And we're still on classes. Starting the list would be great. I am also looking for that person who's willing to give point person with the violin depo. But these, those yeah. brain previously. Right, yes. Yeah. 
Sounds like we're going to have a conversation. He's talking with his name. The one there's a pickup thing that they do in a campaign, they think, but what you, I think you're talking about is just going there, giving away the free stuff to you, right? Uh, so there's, there's two separate things. So there's the giveaway um, to educational nonprofits. Um, so that, that's separate from there's actually a company that resells that equipment, and they've offered to do something for with us in the past. Um, so basically, we're looking for a sponsorship from them. Equipment. So we need someone to solicit them. Cool. I'll take that. I have Epi Fluorescent. And if anybody's looking for microscope, they're looking for Epi Fluorescent microscope, not a camera microscope. Yeah, yeah. That's so the, we want that's, the one with Fluorescent. There's a microscope. We already have a camera like microscope thing, which your man has gifted to. I like that that's a category of microscope. <laughs> I don't know what it means. What camera like? Yeah. <laughs> we're like one of those dallies that name sandwiches after people. We never yeah. equip it after people in. <laughs> Just in case anybody's getting any offers. That's oh. the one you want. Okay. okay. So, so it's this company so, with um, was it bio link? Yeah. Is it a bio? Was it part of the bio? Yeah. Um, so we're gonna be like, I was thinking there's a bio but that sounds like a good takeaway. So, Baybio is an umbrella organization that no, it's not Baybio. No, Baybio is different. Yeah, they're more they, like they're corporate. Right. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I don't remember the name of this. Okay. Um, uh, getting back to classes. Um, so I'm working with Tom to get that one together, and that should be a fairly good uh, income source for us to give us a little boost. Uh, the one on November fifth. Um, uh, and I hope to use it as a template for putting together other classes. So if we do this, we have some easy to teach corporate classes um, in general. Um, and we're still trying to get, I'm still working with a lot of people who are just trying to get me dates for things they want to teach. Um, I still need someone, at least one or two more people to commit for microbiology of the cell. I have one person so far, but um, you know, looking for somebody who has taken that class and is very, very experienced with it to help out. Jen, who is in our bioprinter group and is a new member, um, has so far stepped up and said she would be very interested in helping lead a microbiome of the cell class, um, but not by herself, <laughs> which I don't think is a reasonable expectation of anybody. And as you've run it more than once, you know that that's yeah, very intensive. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, just, um, I can send you the list for the class that we have for okay. ask people who are being Sure. Um, and then for after that, I may actually throw it open to the BioCurious mailing list in general and see if somebody who hasn't been very involved may want to step up in that role. Also, that we've been contacted by a couple of high school science teachers. Yeah. And we ought to throw their request to come in back to them and ask if they'd be willing to help. <laughs> what about the event? Uh, it's a uh, I said that about the Bulgarian school. I don't know when it could be, but um, I've talked to them. I need more info from them about what they really want. So I've gotten back to them. They need to send me some more info. Like what kind of I don't remember. I'll have to look at my email. So I'm I'm in touch with them, and I've done a couple of email exchanges. They may want to do a little tour, a mini like kids class sort of thing for their students. Um, uh, but they're not really sure exactly what they want yet. So. Oh. I'm, I'm not really good with like in terms of English language, like phonetics and all that. But in terms of lab, like like technical laboratory, wet lab, I'm really on point. If you need a lab aid, especially in classes, having like 30, 40 students, please let me know. I'm having BSC, MCB, so you should be able to have that. So I'm microbial, but not not to the point where I teach that. Biosynthesis. That's an important. Yeah. Right. And uh, I did follow up on your question. Um, no, I've got one of the first time who made a verbal commitment. Uh, uh, a friend of mine who's a stem cell researcher will do a stem cell class. Um, but she's booked that's solid that's until February. Um, so I'm trying to get on her schedule so we can see in there. Um, and her background research is a little bit of um, actually, uh, the class by Nicola that I've been just to say yes. doing a uh, yeah, and I've been working now. with Tristan bugging him since about, about. yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
yes, to, to get Tristan to actually teach a phylogenetics class. So as soon as you actually get me the class topic and stop waffling as to what you want to teach. Okay. <laughs> That's awesome. I'm actually taking like three or four genetics classes. And one of them was University of Pennsylvania. Yeah. You need help so with that. I, I would say that's where we are. We definitely need more lab classes, um, but I think we want to be strategic about how we add them so that they add value and they don't have too much overhead to both the instructors or to us, and they're meaningful for students. That's about where we are with the mental classes, I think. Cool. Thanks. That all sounds really exciting. Yeah, I think we have a fair amount going on, and real just as a side note, uh, the bioprinter and real vegan cheese are going like gangbusters, and dear God, help us. <laughs> Holding on to the seat of our pants, aren't we? Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> Doing mini, mini preps and mini preps like you can believe. So the item, <laughs> which yeah. item is coming up. I, uh, I just see the next thing on the uh, yeah, yeah. agenda is item. Aries doing a bio and beer conference. Uh, there's Synbio Beta, and that same weekend there's also a plant power synthetic biology conference. Um, and then the ever popular October bridge cleanup. In fact, let me send one of the guest speakers. I think we should have a guest speaker as to what is this in the we should have a guest again. What is in this culture yeah. for a, really a Starbucks card? Is it not a paper project? Well, it's your art, but I think it's well, cool. Eric, do you want to talk about bio beer a little bit? Uh, <laughs> what is bio and beer? What's bio and beer? <laughs> so first of all, I jam like this is an amazing beer because community labs are allowed in this biggest synthetic biology, not like look, not just competition, but gathering. Like it's the biggest synthetic biology gathering in the world, and they're finally saying, "Okay, community labs, get in." And so this is a huge hat tip to real vegan cheese known forever as the first iGEM team to ever successfully crowdfund a project. Woo! So that's what you get when you let community labs into your closed off academic competition. Um, they also, or Kim DeMora, who is running a lot of outreach for them, said when he came there, Vegan Cheese has gotten more press for this project than they've gotten all year. So now they're reaching out to us asking for help with the media. Yeah. Um, and they've got all of these resources behind them. So you should all congratulate yeah. yourselves on this. Well, and we keep project. getting media requests for vegan cheese. We got another two separate from BioCurious that went to Mark. Uh, National Geographic just contacted us um, two days ago. Yeah, they're doing this whole future of Yahoo thing. Um, and then, then um, our conference. Yeah. Our uh, conference. We keep missing her, but they want to do a feature story in. The local community newspapers, the Palo Alto Weekly, and um, uh, those kind of papers, which actually only have a couple of reporters to do all the community papers. Um, so they want to do a feature on real vegan cheese as well. Cool. So we're continuing to get some good momentum. I think once we actually reach the first phase of the project and get the first uh, protein express, we can do a pretty good media blitz um, around getting some of the provisional patenting done. We are a little bit under the wire with that project, um, and there's been a lot of chatter because there is a competitor who is heavily funded now. Right. Um, so Move Free um, is the uh, team from Ireland that was working on this at the SynBio um, incubator this summer. Um, and they originally had $30,000 in funding to do their project, but they just secured $2 million in venture capital funding. So, and they just moved to San Francisco. Um, so that has panicked some of our team members, so we feel like we have uh, some additional pressure to get our provisional patents done. Um, so we're working on that. Cool. Yeah. Same times. Huh? Same time. Oh my god, good. my email box, if I, I'm gonna tell you now if I miss emails from people uh, between all the mailing lists, I do not know where I'm coming or going. I know we all feel like that. <laughs> But and vegan cheese is now, real vegan cheese is now a company. Yes. Um, and we incorporated, and I'm an officer on the board of directors for Real Vegan Cheese, so I can actually say I speak on behalf of Real Vegan Cheese. Um, the officers are myself, Craig, and Mark. I had a question about the counterculture. I know that most of the uh, project is housed over there. No, it's actually all housed here right now. Oh, really? 
Really? And what about their lab? Like, how good are how, how they're they are still they? building their lab up, and I think it's unrelated to this meeting, so we can talk about it afterwards. So um, uh, that's where we are with that. But I think that there's a lot of momentum between that, and we continue to get a lot of inquiries about where we are with the bioprinter, and as we're getting closer. Um, my goal is to do another big media PR thing once we actually, hopefully, get our printed leaf or the bioprinter, which we're getting closer to. So once we do that, we can actually say we've done the first synthetically bioprinted leaf, um, and uh, actually, hopefully, do a journal article and do some original published research on it, since we're the only one doing that. Um, but having the hood HEPA filter fixed would be a big help in that. Say that again. Um, once we get, we're getting very close to actually doing um, some of the first printing on the bioprinter with the cell cultures we have. Um, so once we can actually have the first synthetic leaf printed, we're working on. We want to do inherent callus cultures printing a maple leaf shape that will photosynthesize with cells that have differentiated into um, cell types that. Um, have chloroplasts. Wow. Um, if we can do that, that will be an enormously huge milestone because no one else has done that in cell printing. So doing that in a DIY space and having the specs as an open source project will be worth a really big media. Are you planning to fund it? No. Do you need any funding? No. I mean, we wouldn't be adverse. One of the things Patrick and I are perversely, and as the two leaders for the project, I have to say we're both in alignment on this is we're both taking a certain amount of reverse pleasure in not crowdfunding it and doing it as on the cheap as we can. Yeah. We did do a mini, like, asking members two meetings in a row for money, and we ended up raising, like, $500 just doing that from new people coming in. And we did buy, uh, we have a second uh, 3D printer that's coming in. Whoa. So we have a rep wrap uh, we ordered six weeks ago that we're going to convert into being bioprinter V5. So V3 is the one that's the open source one. V4 is the printer that is working. And the V5 will be the rep wrap when it gets here. Um, and we seem to be getting a pretty consistently decent sized group of people working on that. So, um, But again, I think just as we're thinking as a media and outreach opportunities and things to think about, that would be a good one. Um, but along those lines, I also want to, and I have no time, um, see about getting us some other new community projects or if anybody has a deep abiding love of the bioluminescence project and wants to restart it I get asked about that a lot um, and I'm almost to the point of being willing to like give an hour maybe before the bioprinter meeting and saying I can help restart the bioluminescence but I can't lead it Let's put that in the volunteer yeah. section on the, the price of one yeah it's just starting a community project I think that once we have all the materials in place for the volunteer yeah. application, we're going to get a pretty big influx of people. Yeah. Um, and that, that's a big one. I mean, one of our biggest gateways to getting new people in here, getting new members, getting something for people to talk and get involved with is the community projects. And that was an irony because we were open for months and nobody was working in the lab. And yeah. We finally came up with like we need to engineer ways for people to start to rework. Well, yeah, that and was so crowdsourced all of these ideas for. And we still have the original idea list too. I yeah. mean, we originally, um, when Patrick and I had the first meeting about what community projects are we going to do, two projects bubbled out of that, which was the bioprinter and bioluminescence. We had a list of forty-two projects ideas. Yeah, we we've only done the first two slash three because ones. vegan cheese was actually sort of kind of on that list. Mm -hmm. But we have a whole bunch of other things that perked out of that meeting, and many of them out of Patrick's insane head. So the bioluminescence project, yeah. Jay is kind of working on that. Jay is working at it. Um, like he's not doing it as an open. He's not interested in running it as a community project, though. He, yeah. he's, he's interested in doing the research. He'll take people on who maybe want to do the, the microbio side. Um, and uh, metabolic engineering, but he's not interested in actually doing the getting new people involved and, and doing the pitch speech every week. I, I mean, any of you who've seen me run the bioprinter meeting or anything else knows how it goes. Yeah, I mean, it, it takes a certain sort of personality. Like, yeah, if you don't want to interact with people, and then <laughs> yeah, if you're if you're like a Patrick or Cameron or me or you know some of those kind of personalities, that's what we're looking for is somebody who's willing to commit to being here every week or even once a month. I mean, and Nicola wants to do something like that with his idea for doing some sort of a hack night when we talk about things, although we 
really have to talk about safety with graphene yes. as part of the hack type. I'd like to learn more. Yeah. <laughs> I'm interested in that material. Uh, okay. Okay. Just like yeah. off the yeah. Yeah. Sure, over time, but Harry, do you want to talk about bio? Yeah, so I want to say I because I was able to get my work uh, to let me go. So I'll be able to be there and represent BioFurious. Um, they asked me to be on a panel on like funding study biology. Um, and it's going to be a huge group, but I'm definitely open for requests for like. Projects you'd like me to check out, people you want to be connected to. I think we should talk about what you should take with you as handouts and stuff, maybe, but not here. But just yeah. as a to do list. When is the graphing? Um, starts October 30th. And out graphing to everyone. Um, <laughs> October 30th through November. I have to leave November 2nd, it goes on to November 3rd. Um, I will also be attending a policy meeting in DC on the 29th. Um, from the Woodrow Wilson Center, uh, they're doing a European Commission funded study on the implications of synthetic biology. So they want me to tell them how risky places like ours are and so how to shut them down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how to shut down the mm -hmm. So it's a really good opportunity to um, talk about great projects here. Yeah. Um, so IGEM, bio and beer is just like a labor of love. I'm doing it with some nerd friends who are into beer at some level. Um, realize that there were so many homebrewers who talk about what they do um, in the same way that somebody in the lab talks about what they do. So there's a natural overlap. We want to do something akin to like a big Oktoberfest tasting session, but including a lot more geekery, including demos and talks from people who are, say, sequencing the genes of yeast that go into um, different types of beer, or who use a very highly engineering driven process for making wine. So we've got a bunch of demos and talks lined up in addition to tastings from mostly craft brewers in the area. Um, we're working on securing a date with the tech for ages. Um, and it finally looks like November 21st is going to be the date um, in the evening. Um, here or at the tech museum. museum. At the tech museum. Yeah. Uh, That's awesome. I was going to say, venue. should we talk about our relationship with the tech too, just briefly? Yeah. Yeah. This is different from Nerd Night. Because they're also an intro. Oh, yeah, totally unrelated. So, this is much like um, the events that would happen where you go, like, I don't even know. Like when food trucks come together, but your yes. tastings are all together and you pay one ticket to go around and taste them all. No free beer. <laughs> I can see if I can get somebody to buy you a beer. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> what if you have no interest in tasting the beer, you just want to go to the event? Yeah. So the tech, um, which is also a nonprofit, like they want to do more and more together. Many of you have met Romy, who's the founder of LA Biohackers. Um, and he's a friend and a great guy who's been working at the tech for the last two years. He wants us to do more, but with the caveat that they can't really, you know, exchange money in the same way that a typical corporation can, but they would like to do an exchange of memberships. So for example, um, they can give free annual memberships to the tech. And they'd like to have like a couple of reserve seats here for um, some of their employees who yeah. would undergo the same training and uh, everything else. But it would be more of an exchange of the memberships, which we could extend to all US members. We did talk with them, so they came for our Monday um, uh, Ruby and Cheese member, uh, meeting. They do have one thing we don't have that we could potentially leverage, um, which is they do have a minus 80 freezer. That we can get access to store samples on. We do need to talk to our safety committee about taking things off site and what a check in, check out procedure would have to be. But they are willing to give us access to storage space in their minus 80, and they're open seven days a week and they're not very far away. So they also have, they, their lab equipment is not as good as ours, but they do have it available. Um, and we did, yeah, we talked to them. Um, 
we are going to work, um, possibly myself and Ad Babes and maybe a couple of others are going to go over and do some real vegan cheese work um, as a sample of just doing some transformations on their equipment for the public to promote real vegan cheese um, to help them um, get their points for iGEM for, com for collaborating with another team, but also to promote our project. Yeah, to make sure we get points out of that too. Yeah, so <laughs> I was going to try to get some signage for BioCurious as well as for Wolfie and Juice if we do that. Uh, awesome. Cool. So I, 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 I want to make sure that even though that there may not be a reciprocal cash um, exchange, having access to that minus 80 may be really valuable to have just if you think about it as offsite backups or keeping some competent cells or something we might need. Um, so. Yeah, keeping cell lines that you don't need access to every day, but being able to go and pick up once in a while or yeah. something like that could be it could be extremely valuable, and they seem very happy to be able to um, be able to offer us that resource. So we need to work out the details with Romy um, and uh, was it Anya? Yeah. Another thing they have is just simply space. They have space. They also have access to a broader community than we have. Mm -hmm. And so for this event, for example, they're willing to market it to all of their people. Yeah. Um, this is apparently like really exciting to their president, um, who's happy to help um, market for it. We will be charging for tickets from $25 to $30, and all of the proceeds will be able to go back to buy curious. So, you know, if we get... 500 people, then that's yep. however many dollars for us. Um, and it's just a lot of fun. It broadens our network. There's lots of people interested and in science, but they're not thinking about it in terms of being a lot of I'd, I'd like to be able to get some of the marketing materials for that to distribute to some of our corporate friends. So we not just amongst our biocurious members, but you know, let other people mm -hmm. certainly pitch my husband's company and some others. Yeah. Sponsorship, if there's good. one thing I know about Barracuda Networks is that they like to drink. See, is that it's uh, a thing. It is a thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, awesome. Dude, I was just going to get any free velvet events. So she knows. Uh, wow. Remember the same stuff? Um, I don't know. We haven't thought about free tickets yet for anybody. I think that would be a good idea at least for us, and then we can spread the word and invite the people to whatever. We still don't know if we're going to buy tickets for people's at the museum. Um, so we have to think about the cost of um, putting on the event. Um, but at this time, like we haven't set aside any great difference. Oh yeah, but that's a little bit different. So this is an, an event outside of that exchange oh. um, just happening that they could be a venue sponsor. All right, any other events that we want to talk about? Yeah, we're going to have a table at Symbio Beta. Oh, we are? Yeah. Okay. Um, Do we have anybody signed up to staff that? Not me. Uh, I convinced Tito to do it. <laughs> what is it? Yeah, I don't even know. I think it's for, <laughs> let's put it on here. 12 to 15? Or yeah. 13. So we'll just want to make sure we have good materials for you. Yeah, that won't be the W. Oh, yeah, so that's in mid-November. Yeah, that's... Yeah, it's... Everything for me is like pre-I-Gem, post-I-Gem. Yeah. So if the goal there is to raise awareness and increase members, then we should offer some Symbio Beta special. Oh, yeah. Uh, like six months, months for five months. Well, Sign up for six if months. Maybe your first month five, for that kind of 50 bucks or something. First month, $50 off. You know, Symbio Beta special. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, yeah I'm definitely interested in the sort of the other corporate sites here. I think there's a lot of people there that would benefit mm -hmm. from, hey, we want to get our people into the lab for once. Five periods. Yeah, no, I think there's a lot of people getting into how are our t-shirt sales going? Only a few sales, only a few. Okay. So it was it was also just a beta uh -huh. to see like a friend of mine at work who the design like suggested we make sure it's that look like that. Um, so I want to see if they resonate with people. Obviously they don't have the, the name on it. People seem to like it. Um, I don't know if people seem to love it. Wet shirt, these gray shirts with the brand. Uh, yeah, they're $25. They just have a brand. The logo. 
Star. Yeah, so the brand mark without the name of the company. I think it's a good idea if you can get more. I really want it, but maybe like two percent out of ten does. Is that what you want to buy more? That's awesome. That's fabulous. 
Cool. Thanks everybody for coming. And uh, cool. Hey, um, just just one quick thing. Um, because I've been having a hard time hearing everything, I've been keeping an eye on the Google Doc. Thank you very much for sending that. Um, and also Googling things on the side. Now, on the document, you say that the Bio and Beer Conference is November 21st, but I've been Googling and Eventbrite says that it's November 6th. That is not accurate. <laughs> okay, so, so be aware of that. And you might want to get that fixed. Yeah, so we haven't put that link out. It's great that Eventbrite is so searchable. I put it up as like a test for design, but thank you. I will definitely update that. So, Thanks, we, have, we can transition. Uh, yeah. yeah, we do our food. I also have a bunch of pictures that we printed out of you guys. So now we can go ahead and put these up. Um, and if you don't have a picture in the stack, we can take a picture of you. And we will put this out in the front area so that people can see it. And then otherwise, this is a celebration for you all. So. This is a weird transition, huh? It'll yeah. happen. Why is that? Why is that? One other thing I would say is usually we close the meeting about saying what we're going to have the next one. We're going to have the next one in two and a half months. Okay. I'm sorry, did I hear you correctly? There isn't going to be another meeting for two and a half months? Not a community meeting. Oh, okay. So we have other meetings um, just in general at BioCurious community meetings, classes, et cetera. The next community meeting to discuss general maintenance, housekeeping will be in two and a half months. We do have subcommittees like the volunteer and the safety committee, the equipment committee, who meet more frequently than that. So if you're interested, let us know and we can get you directed to when the next subcommittee meetings are. Yes, I'm interested. Send me information. Okay, just let us know which subcommittee to info and we can add you to those mailing lists. So can I get a list of the current subcommittees and choose from that? Uh, Anita, do you know which subcommittees there are that you can send Marsha? Um, I can probably find out. Okay, we will get that to you. Awesome, thank you. Thank you very much. You guys have fun. Thank you for popping on. You bet. Okay, can Johan or Jeff turn it off? Yeah. Um, okay, so.